Well, Easter is just around the corner and it's probably one of the funnest holidays for the younger kids. And I'd like to show you a couple of little gardening Easter projects that I think both you and your kids will enjoy. Now, really it's been probably four years ago when I first introduced this segment about dyeing Easter eggs with natural plant dyes. But if you remember, one of our themes this year is growing purple vegetables. And I want to show you some neat things because not only will purple vegetables show you some aesthetic or beautiful color, but it also makes nice dyes for these Easter eggs. What you need is just some vegetables, and you can experiment with different things. Even marigolds and beets will work too. But today I have a purple onion, a yellow onion, and a red cabbage. And the purple or red onion, once you boil the dye out of it and you stain the eggs, you can actually get a greenish looking color. And it's kind of faded on us a little bit. But the yellow onion obviously makes a yellow color on the Easter egg. And then the purple cabbage will make a bluish purple color. And what you do is you take on the onions about five or six layers of the onion peelings and you put them in water, about a cup of water, and you boil that for five to 10 minutes until you get the color that you like. And the same with the cabbage, but only you shred it up about a half a head of the cabbage, again, for five to 10 minutes. And once the liquid has cooled, you add about two tablespoons of vinegar to about three quarters cup of the liquid and that's about how much you'd have left after you've boiled it all out. And then of course you just take the boiled eggs and drop them down in the coloring and, and just leave them as long as you'd like until you get the color that you desire. So really it's a fun project, it's a nice safe thing. Again, you'll need to use a little bit of supervision on them because of the boiling and those types of things with the hot water. But it's a fun thing to try to do and the kids are really amazed that you can get those colors from the vegetables. Now once you've got the eggs finished, it's always fun if you can make your own Easter basket. And we showed this one I think last year, but I wanted to bring it to your attention again. You can just take really just paper trash bags and make nice little Easter baskets out of them. And what you would do is you just, you really need about four of the trash bags and you just start at the top by rolling them down. And you would just complete that until you get it, the first one about, oh, probably four inches. High. And then you would roll a second one about six inches and you just insert it inside the first one. You do a third one about eight inches and insert it inside. And then to make the handle, you would cut the bottom out of a trash bag, roll it all the way down, slide it over the side, and then you can decorate it any way you like. And one of our volunteers, Lynn Hughes of Stillwater, decorated this one using some yarn. And of course, it, it, you know, with the grass in there and everything, it would make a pretty sturdy little basket for some of the smaller kids. Now, I also found a great idea from Mr. Jim and Lisa Polston of Norman, Oklahoma. And Jim actually works for the Parks Department there. And he reminded me that on Easter baskets, you can actually grow your own grass by using annual ryegrass or perennial. And that's what we've done here in this particular Easter basket. And then we just place our decorations right inside there. And really, you can use just about anything. Not only would baskets work, but here you'll notice that we've used a clay terracotta pot that's been painted white. And then we've planted the rye grass in there. And again, notice that it'll need a haircut from time to time because it grows pretty fast. And if you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can even use the plastic terracotta pots. And, and again, it's just a tremendous difference in the weight of that. And that one obviously needs a haircut as well. But if you're going to try this at home, I'd encourage you to be careful on your baskets because there's going to be some moisture leaking out of it, obviously, and it might cause them to rot or decay. So you don't want to use your favorite baskets. But really, just about any container will work. And now, to hold the moisture in the soil a little bit better, we take a little bit of plastic and we line the inside of the basket, which you'll see we've already done on this one. Then you need some type of aggregate to allow the moisture to drain from the soil, and that's the very first layer. Here we've put in perlite, which is a common mix in potting soil, and we've just purchased a bag of perlite. It's real fibrous and, and loose, and it allows moisture to drain through it. But in some of the baskets, we've even used styrofoam peanuts that we've chopped up a little bit, and it makes a nice product that you can recycle. Once you put in a layer, and the Depth of that really kind of depends on the height of your basket. In this particular one, it's about an inch, inch and a half. Then you want to just take a good potting soil, put that next layer in, 
and pack it down a little bit. And again, the plastic is going to help hold some of the moisture and hold the potting soil in a little bit better. And once you've got that layer in, we always kind of like to tap it to make it settle a little bit. And we'll trim off this plastic in a little bit. But next, before you fill it all the way to the top, take your annual ryegrass. Now we put it in very thick and we just scatter that on top and make sure you get it spread across and, and also along the edges because you want to make sure you have some of the grass growing right up against the edge. And again, we put it on pretty thick and an annual ryegrass is still pretty easy to purchase. And then we take another layer of the potting soil and probably about a half inch and it's going to pack down a little bit after we water it in. But just enough to barely cover it and then we'll kind of tap it down one more time and again we'll trim off the plastic but it's very important at that stage to give it a nice soaking because remember that peat moss and that potting soil is very dry so we really want to soak it pretty good and it's taken oh just a little over a week for the seed to germinate we try to keep it as cool as possible we've been sitting it outside as long as it doesn't freeze and within a couple of weeks you can have a pretty nice stand of annual ryegrass now again, I think this is a great project you might want to try and remember you've got plenty of time to get your Easter basket started and again it's a great way to involve the kids in gardening projects.